Hello there everyone. Today I want to show you how to make this beaded kumahima braid but using long makatama beads which will give you a completely different effect than any other beads. And this is what it looks like. So because of the shape of these beads you get this almost like scaly effect and it's a really nice result you can get. So if you want to learn how to do that then keep watching. And so these are the things that you'll need. Now for this we'll need to use our round kumahima disc because we're making a basic round braid. And then what I'm going to use as well is this cord. Now this is Eslon cord um, and it's about 0.4mm thickness. And I don't want it to be too thick like a 1mm or something because that will make it a lot chunkier. And the beads themselves make it chunky enough. But also this Eslon is really nice and strong so the finished piece is going to be really nice and durable. So I like using this. You don't have to, you can use another type of cord. This is just what I like to use and it comes in loads of different colours and obviously I've chosen this white colour to match my beads so the cord doesn't stand out too much. And the beads that I'm using here is what I'm going to be showing you how to do is the long Magatama beads and this gives a really nice effect to your final braid, almost a bit like scaly effect. Um, and again these are just like a white pearly finish they have and you can get beads that are called magatamas, that's the regular magatamas, but these are the long magatamas. So get all your materials together and then let's get started. So to be able to start making a braid we first need to cut our cords ready and now what I've done is I've cut four lengths of my eslon, so just cut four lengths of what you're using and they're about one meter each. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a basic eight strand kumahima braid. So I've cut four long lengths and then what I'm going to do to get 8 lengths is double these over. So meet the ends up. And then where I have my finger here with the loop, that's going to be roughly the middle. So keep a hold of that. And then with my two sides of cord, so four acting as one and then the other four acting as one, I'm just going to then do a simple regular overhand knot, like so and then pull that tight right here where you held your finger where the middle is and then just pull that nice and tight so that's how I'm going to start off with my cords and now we need to attach them to the board so you get your disc out and then this is where you made your knot that's going to be the middle and that's what we're going to start basically having in the very centre of the disc, so the centre of the hole here and then to distribute the cords we just need two around the top dot of your board two around the side one side and then the others just distribute the same way so two around the opposite side as well and then two around the bottom dot like this and you can just adjust them so it sits in the middle. And then this is the setup of your very basic eight strand braid. Now what you can do to make it a bit easier, because this knot in the middle is going to be a starting point of our braid, you can attach a little bit of wire, a little bit of scrap cord around that knot and then have it come down to help pull it through the beginning if you need to do that. Otherwise you can just kind of keep hold of the knot and then as the braid grows you'll obviously have something to keep hold of then. But otherwise, to start making the braid, like I said, it's just a basic eight strand braid. So at first, before we add the beads, I just want to do a little tiny section where it's just cord, because we're going to use that section at the end to attach to whatever findings you're using to finish off the braid. So to start the braid, I just normally work from my top left and go down to my bottom left, and then the bottom right up to the top right. Turn my disc and then move on. And this is just a basic extra braid like I said. So nice and easy. And using this card and because we're making the basic eight strand braid, the braid itself because we're adding the beads is not going to be too chunky. Whereas if you used a thicker card or a braid with more strands in it, it would make the braid even chunkier. So obviously that's really personal preference, but this is just how I prefer to like to do to do them. So just keep doing this for a while until you have maybe about a centimeter or so of just braid. 
and then I'll show you how we add on the beads. So I've now made that little section of cord first that we're going to use at the end to finish off the braid and now it's time to start adding in our beads so we can incorporate them into the braid itself. And to do that I just put my board down and then we start working with one length of cord at a time and just get to the end and then what you'll find is these Magatama beads, the shape they have, that's what makes them so different from other beads is they have a very distinct shape and the hole kind of goes at an angle as well so that's why the difference when you need to add these Magatama beads than say your regular round beads is you need to make sure you do it the right way um, now obviously if, you don't, if you're not bothered, if you want kind of a higgledy-piggledy look, that's fine you can just add them randomly but if you want the uniform look that they can give you need to kind of decide the way that you're going to be adding them and just stick to that. So this is the shape that the bead has, as you can see. And what you can see is that it's a bit like a square, except it has two of the sides are a bit at an angle. So it almost has like two points. And then on one end of the bead, that's where you have your hole. Up here, I can show you. And what you'll find is, on that end, because the side is at an angle, the hole goes through the bead at an angle as well. So this is where if you put them on in different directions that they won't sit evenly on the braid. So you just need to decide the way that you would like to put them on. It doesn't matter if you go from one side or the other side, as long as you stick to the same thing. And what I normally do is I normally take the point on that side where the hole is, that's normally where I go in from, so where the hole is furthest towards the top because then the hole kind of goes downwards towards the other side like so so that's just what I normally do, you can quite easily go in from the other side but this is just kind of the natural way that I do it so I know by doing that there's less risk of me putting them on the wrong way and you just keep doing that get the next one, make sure you're going from the right way I go in from the point on the front of that and just keep adding your beads and you want to do this on all your lengths of cord so I've now threaded on all my beads onto all my lengths of cord and what I've also done is put these bobbins on each length at the end and this is what they look like. They're some little plastic things and they're called bobbins and it's just to help you keep your lengths of cord organized and untangled really. So what you do is you get your end of your cord, wrap it around the middle of that bobbin and then close it back up and then you have it there set on the end of your cord and then you can quite easily release your cord like this if you need more space to work with but otherwise, I like to use these when I'm working with my beads on Kumihimo because it just helps things keeping it organised and not get it tangled and that. So that's optional, but it's an extra little thing you can work with if you need to. Now regarding how many beads you need, it obviously depends on what you're making, the materials that you're using, and then how large your final piece is going to be. But for this, I'm making like a standard 7 inch, 7.5 inch bracelet. And what I have is, it's my regular 8 strand braid, so I have 8 lengths of cord and on each length I've put on 30 of my long Magatama beads and this is going to make roughly about a 7.5 inch bracelet and this is about 20 to 25 grams in total that you'll need and then before we start adding the beads into the actual braid I just want to give you one little last tip you put on all your beads onto your lengths of cord and because like I explained that the hole in these beads go at an angle which means that you can kind of put them on the wrong way if you want it to look even. Um, so what I recommend is once you put all your beads on is that you hold up your lengths of cord, just do one at a time and then what you'll find is that they kind of fall in a pattern very even. So if you hold up your strand with your beads on and you look at it from the side what you'll find, like I said, is they all sit the same direction so you almost get like this very even pattern on them and now what you'll find is if you put some on the wrong way it'll stand out quite a bit and this is a way for you to catch it before you actually start making your braid so on this end I've purposely put some on the wrong way so you can see 
Okay, you see all of a sudden that breaks up that very even pattern and it stands out quite a lot that there's some beads on the wrong way there. And then you're better off than catching that now, taking them back off and then putting them back on the, the right way. So it's just a little tip to double check that all your beads are on the right way. And then what we now need to do is start adding the beads to the braid. So now that we know everything is in order and in place and sits correctly, we can now start adding the beads to the braid. And to do that, all you have to do is continue with the exact same braid that you were making without the beads, except every time we cross over a cord, we're going to add a bead or drop a bead down. Now what we still have is we have that little section of just cord that we made at the beginning, just to finish off the bracelet at the end. And now I'm going to go back to my top. So my top left one is the one I start with of this pair. And then as I move that over, I drop down one bead, and then what you want to do is make sure that that bead ends up underneath your cords in the middle. So if it doesn't go there naturally, kind of make sure to tuck it under with your fingers. And then bring the cord down just like with your regular braid. And now to the other side. So the bottom right one, bring it up. Drop down one bead as you're moving the cord across. And then fasten that on the other side, like so. So that's your first set done with beads, moving across to the next one. Do the same thing, grab your piece, grab your length of cord, drop down one bead, if it doesn't go underneath by itself and tuck it under, and then fasten the cord on the bottom. And then the bottom one, drop down one bead. Make sure it goes underneath and then fasten it on the other side. Now the first section where you start adding the beads is just going to be a little bit, it's going to look a bit messy and it's going to seem a bit loose but it's just until you start building it up a bit more. And also what you'll find, at the moment my bobbins are resting on the table which obviously isn't really much help but normally I would sit with it so they hang down freely so that's what where they come in and it helps not tangle so much. So it's just for this demonstration they're going to be on the table, but otherwise they would hang down freely normally. And to show you again a bit more up close so you can see how the beads sit in the middle, I'm going to move on to my next pair and then grab my cord from the top left, drop down just the one bead and have it go underneath. And you can see kind of the bottom point where your hole is, that's the part that goes underneath and in towards the middle of the braid. And now what you want to do is when your beads start kind of, when you've added enough so they start layering up and going on top of each other, what you want to make sure is when you add your bead, that the one you add kind of goes on top of the rest, goes on top of the beads that's right next to it, like so. And then the other side. Grab the cord, release one bead, let it drop down until the point of it goes in towards the middle and sits on top of the other beads. And if it doesn't quite sit right, because it'll be a bit loose at the beginning, it's just until you get the braid going, they'll kind of naturally slot into place. But just use your fingers to maneuver them into place if they're not quite right. And then it's just moving on like this. Drop down a bead. As you can see, that went nicely by itself into position. And take the next one, drop down a bead, and into position. So you just keep going like that. And I'm going just, I always take my top left one, bring it down, then my bottom right one, bring it up and then I move anti-clockwise on the disc. It doesn't matter what you do, you can do it the opposite way, go from the bottom and up, um, turn it the other way, it doesn't matter at all, as long as you make sure to stay consistent throughout the whole braid. So that's the main thing you need to make sure of, but there's no specific direction you have to go. So just keep building your braid like this, adding in your beads, and once you get started with this, adding your beads, the braid builds up really quickly. 
because obviously the beads themselves take up more space than the cord, just using the cord would. So your braid builds up quite quickly. So just continue doing this, make sure that your beads always sit on the top of the others. And you'll get a nice and even braid. So I've now finished up using all my beads on all my strands. And then you have your beaded Kamehameha braid coming out like this on the back side. And then all we need to do now is basically replicate the other end on this end. So what we need to do is just a little section of just cord. And all you do is continue with the exact same basic braid that you've been doing the whole time, just no longer adding in the beads. So just do a little section here like this. And what you'll find is that the cord with no longer adding the beads, it'll naturally kind of singe in to become only that section with cord again. So just do about the same length, about a centimeter or so. Just to give you something to be able to finish off the braid. So I've now made that little section, finished that off, and then all I have to do is kind of secure the end in place so that when we take it off the disc, it won't unravel. And the way that I do that, when I use this type of cord, is I just take opposite lengths of cord so the ones that sit in very opposite each other, like this. And I just make sure that I don't take the pair that I've just done. And then I cross them over on the middle, do a regular overhand knot, and then tie that knot right on top of the end of your braid. You can place these back in your disc to get them out of the way. Move on to the next set of cards that are very opposite each other. Cross them over the middle and tighten that knot right on top of the other knot. Move on, do the same thing with all of them so you secure all the loose ends in place basically. And then this will help become really nice and secure. And the last set, like so. And then we can take it off the disc without worrying about it coming undone. Put the disc away, like so. As you can see, nothing's coming undone there. And then all I do is I get a bit of glue, and then right around where I've made these knots while my ends are coming out, I just put a bit of glue. Now you can either use the E6000 for this or the GS Hypo Cement, either will work fine. And just put a little bit of glue, let that dry and then cut off all the excess lengths right close to where they're coming out. And then all that's left to do is finish off the bracelet. And to finish off the ends, what I like to do is use these. And these are little Kumahima ends, or bell ends, because they're kind of shaped like a bell. They look like this. And I just use a lobster claw clasp and extender chain to attach them for the locking part. And you just glue the very end of your braid into that piece and I normally use E6000 for that, it's a really nice and strong glue and also dries clear but I have a video on how I finish off Kumihi Mines that I'll link in the description box but otherwise this is your finished braid using your long megatemis and this is the effect that you get almost like a really scaly effect so that's how you make this so I really hope that you enjoyed this and thank you very much for watching Hello there everyone, today I'm going to show you how to finish off your Kumihimo braids. And I have these two as examples. So I'm going to show you how to finish off a round one, using these type of ends, and then how to finish off a flat one. So if you want to learn how to do that, then stay tuned. Now the first Kumihimo braid that I'm going to show you how to finish off is a round one. And I have one here that I've made and 